Hi, this is Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am here to do a tag from Jeannie B ASMR. She created the most interesting questionnaire of all times. All times. Um, it's really fun and I want to tag everybody to do it because I think it's a really good one. It's thought provoking and interesting. A um, little bit about Jeannie B. She does ASMR and she is very, very talented. Not only is she beautiful, but uh, she has the most exquisite ASMR voice and she makes some very interesting videos. And I think you should check her out. Her link will be in the description below. And I'm pretty sure you will enjoy her. I would be shocked if you didn't. So anyway, let's get started. Oh, I wanted to tell you, I have a couple things in common with Jeannie B. We both had major crushes on David Cassidy and Love Partridge Family Music. We both have swallowed a bottle of baby aspirin when we were children. And what was the third? Oh, and she has cats who like to appear in her videos. And I have a three-year-old grandnephew who I'm watching. And he likes to get in my videos. But right now, he thinks he's a cat. Ha, huh, meow, meow. <laughs> all day, he's been following me around the house, acting like a cat. Like, getting on all fours and everything. So, I'm sure he'll make an appearance. Um... He will in the bloopers because I'm going to put some bloopers at the end. I tried to start this so many times. So let's get started on the questionnaire. Do, do, do. All right. She cr created this into sections. The first section is about you. The number one question is your favorite drink, one hot, one cold. And if a bug landed in it, would you still drink it? My favorite cold drink is Pepsi. And my favorite hot drink is chai tea. I would probably, yeah, I'd probably still, it, it depends on how thirsty I was, you know. My favorite overall drink is water, but that's boring for this questionnaire. Okay, let's put it that way. But yeah, I'd probably still drink if a bug flew in it. Well, it depends on how big the bug is, now that you think about it. Yeah. If it's a wee one, probably it'll be okay. Um, number two. Favorite fashion designer or brand you would wear five days a week and cost is not an issue? Well, my absolute favorite design designer is, well, it's Dior, vintage Dior. So... Clearly, they'd have to uh, stuff me into it or make some that's my size. But, oh, those vintage Dior designs. Actually, I would love to have a house full of them just to stare at and touch the fabrics because I'm like a tactile person. I love soft fabrics. In fact, like my shirt right now, it has like a soft right here and it's super soft. Oh, just love that. So, vintage Dior. Third question, favorite dream destination, all paid, and you'll spend six months there. Well, if I had to stay in one place, I'd probably say Maui. That was the most incredible place I've ever been to, relaxation-wise. And people-wise, were so, so amazing there. And lots of good food. And the beach, you know, the clear water. I can't believe it's still the Pacific Ocean, because I live in California, and our ocean is not clear like that. I don't understand how is it the same ocean. Maybe someone can explain that for me in the comments. <laughs> or point me in the right direction of someone who might know. Four, if you could have anyone do a makeover on you, who would it be? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Here's my cat, Meow Meow, a.k.a. Charlie. Yep, there he goes. 
Um, what would it be? Hmm. Well, you know, I can't remember his name offhand, but I really like the makeover guy that's on YouTube. I really enjoy his channel and the makeovers they do, although I wouldn't want him to change the color of my hair because I love my purple hair, but he could do whatever he wants style-wise or my makeup or my clothes, but leave the color of my hair alone. So the makeover guy. And why can't I remember his name right now? It's driving me crazy. Uh, number five, do you dance and or sing? Really bust a move or belt it out when you're alone? Oh, I dance and sing even when I'm not alone. I have no problem doing it. I particularly love to embarrass my nieces and nephews in public by doing both. Uh, my oldest nephew, who is in his early 30s now, I used to love, because he's like a super quiet, quiet guy. And I would love to be in public and I would just start singing and dancing. And he would be like, are you okay? Do you need to go to the hospital right now? Is something wrong with you? I, I just loved it. Or I would be in the car and every time um, the Beastie Boys, I think it's intergalactic, you know, and it's like, I would be like, so people could see us in the car. I just love doing that. That's fun. So the next section is, you are on a deserted island and there's food and water so you won't die. What music album would you choose to have with you and you have some form in which to play it? So, I would probably pick The Joshua Tree by U2, because it, it evokes so many memories I have. Um, it was a per perfect time in my life. I really enjoyed that time. I mean, I love the music anyway, but the time was super, super special to me. Um, we, a group of us went to uh, Tempe, Arizona and got to be part of two concerts that were filmed that they made into the movie Rattle and Hum. And so just that whole weekend there in Arizona, it was just, like my first plane ride was to go there to see that concert. And um, just th the silly things that happened and it just, it was just so incredible. Oh, got a picture in front of B.B. King's bus cause he opened for them. I mean. It was just incredible time and I was 22 and I was super cute and I was just loving it. <laughs> um, number two, again, we're on the desert island. What flower would you choose to propagate there? And it would be sunflowers. I love them. They're beautiful. And I don't know if how the seed part grows, but that would be a bonus because <laughs> I love sunflower seeds and sunflower butter. I've switched from peanut butter to sunflower butter. Oh, I love peanut butter, but there was something in it that sometimes makes my stomach not feel very well, but sun butter, mm -mm -mm. I love it. Um, number three, what beauty product or toilet tree item would you have? Okay, you can have two. So I would have to have lip balm because I'm addicted to lip products, lipsticks, lip balm, anything like that. Flavored, unflavored, I love it all. So I'd have to have that. And, hmm, toilet tray item, toothbrush, because I'm obsessed with brushing my teeth as well. Okay, four. What animal would you give a voice to so you could converse? And you get to have that animal on the island. I would love to have a little chihuahua dog. I had, um, well, we had a therapy dog for my dad and he was a chihuahua terrier mix. And I, I love that dog, but he is now living on a farm with my friend in Missouri. Shout out to Sherry for taking him. Um, and he's living his best life out there. So he's enjoying it. So I would have a little chihuahua that I could talk to because they're so cute and you come home on your lap. And instead of yip, 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 yip you would have actual conversation. Although 
my Sharpie, he didn't, he hardly ever barked. Let's see, number five. Oh, you get to have two books to have with you, one fiction and one nonfiction, and you must read them over and over. What books are they? Well, that's an easy one. For nonfiction, it's The Diary of Anne Frank. I read that book so much when I was younger that my paperback copy fell apart and I just put it together with a, held it together with a rubber band. And I still read that copy until it literally just pretty much disintegrated. Uh, so, and I have read it many times as an adult. Uh, the second book would be Little Women by Louisa May Alcott because that is probably my favorite fiction book as from being a child. But I still love that book as an adult. It inspired me to write. It inspired me to be my own self because of uh, Jo March. Uh, her character was such an inspiration to me in my life, so I would read that one over and over. Now we're going to the third section, which is people. What is your favorite quality in a person? I think kindness. I think that's such an important thing. Um, you can get so far in the world just by being kind to people and so much more understanding of other people when you're kind. And I strive to be kind, but I'm not always, but I try. Um, let's see, number two, you're very old and at the end of your days, what warning would you give to your 20 year old self that you think you would actually listen to as a 20 year old and one that would make a real difference? There is no such thing as job security. Now I say that as currently being in my job for 32 years, but during those 32 years, I have survived many, 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 many layoffs and there's more to be coming at my company where I work and over, especially over the next two years we've been told. So, and the last two years has been a lot. So there is no such thing. So maybe do something that you really wanna try, at least try things, especially when you're younger. And if they don't work out, do something that you might feel more uh, secure in, but there is no such thing as job security. And I, Wish I would have known that. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Three, what superpower would you bestow upon certain people if you could? I would bestow the superpower that everyone could see, other people could see the worst things that people they're dealing with have been through. And I think that would uh, generate more kindness, understanding, and empathy. What superpower would you choose for yourself? Um, the ability to speed read, because I love reading and I read so much. And as I am older now, it's harder for me to read for as long of periods of time as I used to. So um, I would choose speed reading. <laughs> to me, that's a superpower. I don't know if other people would think so. Uh, number five, if you could be anyone other than yourself for one year, who would that be? Oh. Okay, there's two people. I'm gonna pick a male and a female because they both intrigue me. The male would be Bono from U2. Um, I would love to know what it's like to be a powerful male in this world. Um, I think I have very similar um, passions and, um, well, not talents, but different talents, but same drive, let's put it that way. But it is easier, or at the time when he became successful, much easier for a man to become successful and in the way that he's been to stay that way. So I would love to be that for a year. And as a woman, it would be Sama Hayek because I think she's fantastically gorgeous, 
absolutely brilliant. And I would love to know what it's like to be that amazing looking and smart and talented because she's very talented as well. Um, as a, not only as an actress, but as a producer, a director, I really, really like her. So next section is historical. What one past non-family person would you benefit from spending a day with? Historical non-family person, would you benefit from spending a day with? Abraham Lincoln. And I say that because of, we have such trying times right now in the United States and he was, you know, presided over our country during the probably the one of the worst times. So I would like to see how he engaged with the world. Two, what era or period in time would you want to go spend six months in? Honestly, I don't know. I really feel fortunate to have been born in the time period I was, uh, especially being a woman. Um, I don't know. Um, Maybe I was alive during the latter end of the 60s, but I was a child, a baby. So maybe um, being a college age woman during that time, that might have been very interesting to, to be part of. Number three, it's 1850. You get to go back for one year in any profession. What profession would that be? And assume you have the education for it. Um, a writer. Although a writer in the 1850s, I'd probably have to use a, a pen name that was male because uh, I don't think I would get uh, published. Um, number four, which, what historical non-family figure would you want to bring into now and show them current events for a month? Hmm. Huh. Non family historical figure. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera like it can help me figure this out. Um Martin Luther King Jr. because he did not get to experience any of the fruits of his labor really and shamefully it seems like we may be going down in a spiral back but uh, I would like him to be here to see how he is celebrated and admired and you know, the acts of service that people do in his name. I would like that. Uh, number five, what historical family would you choose to be a member of and why? Oh, my. Woo, historical family. Hmm. I'm going to say the English royal family. And I would use the Elizabeth II era. Um, funnily enough, I am supposedly named after her and her daughter. Elizabeth Ann is my name. Um, I don't know how true that is because there were times I'd asked my parents when I was younger and they said they couldn't remember why but it sounds good right but she was the oldest and had a lot of responsibility 
and while and I was in the same position now, of course, I didn't, wasn't a sovereign over a country, but I would like to see if there were any parallels that we lived, because I feel like there were, and I know that she sacrificed a lot to be the sovereign, and not gonna lie, I've sacrificed a lot being the oldest in my family, taking care of my parents when they were aging and before they passed, and well, actually even long before they passed, uh, many, many years. Um, they either live with me or they live next door to me or very close to me, so. Um, and siblings, and uh, my, started at an early age. Uh, my brother was born very, very ill and he needed to have a surgery that he was not expected to live from when he was five weeks old. And when he did come home, he was, he needed 24 hour care. My mom had four children under the age of five and he was the youngest. So, hi meow meow. Meow meow. And um, so, you know, I potty trained my sisters. There was a lot of stuff I did, learned how to cook meals and Put that down. Thank you. So while, you know, our responsibilities were clearly different, I would love to experience the family from her perspective without the gossip and all the stuff that we see. So I think that was the last question. Let me make sure. It is the last question. And I really appreciate it if you've made it to the end of this video. And I hope that you would also do this tag and again, I'll have the information in the link and it'll have the questions as well in my description box. And um, thanks for spending time with me and meow, 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 meow. And uh, I'll include a blooper at the end of when I tried to uh, film this before. Thanks so much. Oh, and oh, I gotta remember my tagline. It's been so long since I've been like, did a long form video. Remember to always live greatly and live generously. Bye for now. Yeah. Hi, this is Elizabeth and welcome to my channel. <laughs> yes, you're supposed to shh. <laughs> uh, today, I am going to be uh, responding to Jeannie B's from Jeannie B ASMR channel, her most questioning, most interesting questionnaire of all time. Oh my goodness, kid. Hi, this is Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel. Today, close that. Close that, because I don't want it in my video. Clo go close it, you just opened it.